Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is the co-founder and CEO at DexCare, Derek Street. How are you today? Great. Uh, thanks, Jared, for having me. Excited to have you here. Let's dive right in. Tell me a little bit about your background. Sure. Uh, so Derek Street, I'm co-founder and CEO of DexCare. We're an organization spun out of Providence Health that uh, focuses on uh, access optimization for patients, providers, and health systems. Um, I'm a I'm a technology entrepreneur, and so I've been building companies for um, two and a half decades now. Um, uh, DexCare is the sixth, the sixth venture-backed company. So half in healthcare, half in more kind of e-commerce and ad tech and MarTech. Started my career as an investment banker um, and then did a short stint in between uh, where I did global development work, microcredit work, um, in uh, mostly in um, in India and a little, little bit of Southeast Asia. And for those uh, for, for those that don't know about DexCare yet, give us that quick overview of the company, where things are at today. Sure. So DexCare itself is a data-driven intelligence company um, focused 100% on healthcare access. Um, we wake up every day uh, marching towards this, this vision that everyone everywhere uh, will someday enjoy exceptional access to the, the best expertise to prevent, treat, and cure illness. And it's a really big problem. Uh, it's, it's sort of tip of the spear in healthcare. You, you literally, by definition, can't have uh, a care without accessing it. It's, it's you have to do that. Um, and so it's a, it's a good place to be, to make an impact, uh, which is, uh, which is very important to all of us here. And so our angle, the way we, the way we help, uh, in the access space is, um, is by orchestrating, uh, the demand side of healthcare. So patients, uh, consumers, patients, uh, looking for care that need care. And then the supply side, which are the providers and the health systems that provide it and doing it across all service lines. And, and that manifests itself in this technology platform that um, has, has kind of these, the, these three components that make that orchestration possible. One we, is what we call digital discovery solutions. So these are all the things that make it so you or I, Jared, uh, when we're really anywhere, usually in some sort of a digital environment, but really anywhere online or on our mobile phones or you know, on, on an ITV, I mean, a- anything um, uh, that we, c- it, it, we, we can more easily discover the care options that are available to us um, uh, and not have to go through all the hoops that you normally have to go through to get, get, get care. So one is, is, is discovery. Another piece then is, is then is all about intelligently navigating people to safest and best care options. And then the third and final piece is what we call capacity optimization, which is about connecting that supply, those providers, facilities, equipment, et cetera, uh, within health systems or other care provider institutions to that that demand to those consumers and, and patients um, in a way that allows them to allocate those resources in a way that is uh, can allow them to be, to be most productively employed. And so the stitching together of patient, provider, and health system needs uh, allow us to just approach um, approach access in a way that's just much more impactful for folks. And happy to share more detail about how we do that. Within that overview. Uh, Derek, you mentioned access multiple times. Talk me through, you know, your thoughts on the current state of access in the U.S. today. Yeah, well, you know, I wish, um, uh, I, I, I wish, you know, I, part of me wishes that this business didn't even need to exist. You know, when I, I mentioned I did that global development work a while back, it was in a, a nonprofit, and, and it was one of the nice things I really enjoyed uh, uh, doing that, uh, that was with the former, um, first HR leader at, at Microsoft, um, a guy by the name of Mike Murray, you know, he told me when he started, he said, look, you know, our goal here is to make it so that we legitimize this world so much that you don't need, you don't need what we were doing, the organization called Unitas at the time. And I really, I really respected that. Unfortunately, in the world of healthcare access, um, literally today, uh, uh, we, a member of our, of our family has a healthcare breakdown. And so, you know, they're having problems getting to a particular type of specialist. Now it's a pretty specialty specialist, so it would normally be hard. But what do you do at the end of the day? What you do is you start calling up people you know to try to get, you know, into this place that, you know, is booked out until November. And and it's just, it's really, really hard to get an appointment. Um, uh, it's really hard to uh, get the right appointment. And when I'm talking appointment, I'm talking broadly, right? An appointment doesn't necessarily need to be going to a doctor's office. It could be just be doing a virtual visit or something. 
uh, just getting someone to listen to you. It's just really, really difficult to do that. And so I would say the state, unfortunately, of access is pretty cruddy right now. And then um, it's really hard and confusing for patients. Uh, there's too many choices and the choices never seem to be available. And then the other the other stakeholders get left out. So when somebody, it's not like there aren't people working on access. It's been a problem for a long time and they're very smart people working on it. But when when they do tend to focus on it, um, they they index so much on patient uh, and consumer, which we're all patients and consumer. We want that too. But then they forget about, well, there's a provider on the other end that if you throw all this volume at them, they're going to burn out and that's not going to help anybody. And then if you don't factor in the institution, well, at some point, you know, if they're not making enough money to sustain their operations, uh, then they're not going to be able to provide care. And so, you know, the, the other sort of problem with access is it doesn't, not only is it just hard and complicated and all the things we know as consumers, but it doesn't connect the needs and interests um, and just realities of the other stakeholders in a way that makes it all work to work, work, to work, work together. And so we, you know, we're kind of gluttons for punishment here at Dexcare, I suppose, but we try to focus on all those points of connection um, so that we can, we can kind of, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. We think that's the right answer, although we got a lot of work to do, you know, as an industry. So let's dive more into that piece. So in terms of Dexcare, right. Um, you know, how, how up to this point, right. How has Dexcare helped close those care access gaps um, with, Let's let's t use uh, health systems in the U.S. today. Yeah, yeah. So um, a number of, it, it comes back to those three kind of legs of the stool I was saying, right? So the first is the first is on the discovery front. So uh, to double click on that a little bit, um, when 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 we all go looking for care these days, typically you know some something happens where you know now we have to suddenly we're usually usually not 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 looking for care it's something happens like we okay now we have to see the doctor um and then and then you know unfortunately what most of us do is we end up uh i'm in a digital company but we still end up calling a bunch of phone numbers getting into a call center right and 30 for 35 percent of people drop off of uh, out of a call center because they wait on hold too long um and then if we if we're one of the two-thirds that stay on we get in there um, and then, you know, long story short, somebody tells us, you know, all right, you know, this person will see you in three months. Right. Um, and if it's urgent, then we'll go to the ED and then we'll wait around for hours to get in and it'll be expensive for everybody and a bad experience for everyone. So, um, so the first thing we do is make it so that, um, uh, anywhere you're looking for care, we make care more shoppable as a way of thinking of it. So if we want to buy anything as consumers online today, we have lots of choices, you know, I mean. It seems like all roads end up leading to Amazon, but there's a bunch of third-party sellers there as well, right? So there's lots of choices of ways you can access the different products and services. So we do the same thing for health systems. We make their all those doctors appointments and clinics and virtual care sessions and all those things syndicated everywhere online, right? So are the health systems that work with us, they don't have to just wait for you to come to their website, right? Or or open up their app or download their app. You can stumble across them in a Google search result when you're just typing in urgent care near me or whatever you're typing in, you can, you can get to them when you're on some marketplace that is, you know, a ZocDoc or whatever is, is having doctor's appointments. Uh, you know, we, we basically extend all these digital front doors. So there's a lot of other places for you to get to people. That's one, two, we make it a lot easier for you as a consumer to then get into care. So instead of requiring you to go through, you know, super heavy processes that require you to enter a ton of information to fill up their their electronic medical record to then go get care we get the minimal stuff you need to get you into care quickly and then we'll we'll get other stuff later and fill it out later we tie it all into the electronic medical record so you have continuity but we don't make you as a consumer suffer through all that process that's on that side of it and then the other ways we make it better is is then once you've found that care um, instead of showing you the litany of you know every possible option in the health system tons of tabs on a website search results page that have 900 doctors right you know that could take care of you a bunch of which are dead ends uh we learn a little bit about you right we ask some questions uh if you're already the patient of that system we can look at the electronic me medical record we we try to land on the safest and best care option for you so you see it may not be just one but at least it's a it's a reduced set that allow you to get to something that's more relevant. And then the final piece we'll do on the, that makes it better is on the capacity optimization side 
if if uh, if somebody is available for you now, but we know that our models tell us that you know for your particular situation, Jared, like they're just they're going to take twice as long. You're going to have to drive into the clinic to see them because they don't do a virtual visit, um, and you know half the time they end up having to have you see somebody else. And you know if we just waited you know an extra five minutes this other person is going to be available they see a ton of people like you they can do it virtually uh we can make this a lot better and a lot faster for you then our system will kind of um uh, rematch or balance that load if you will in the back end so that ultimately you're getting a more satisfying experience and it's good for the patient and the provider and the health system it also tends to be really good um, not only is it good clinically and satisfaction wise, it's also good financially for a health system so they can allocate the resources in a way that allows them to serve more people and serve them better. And, and I guess, Derek, what do you hope to see in terms of us achieving a, a sustainable, scalable and accessible healthcare uh, system in the near future? W what does that look like? Well, unfortunately, you added the last part in the near future, Jared, which, as you know, being in healthcare, that's uh, kind of an oxymoron in, uh, in, in healthcare. Uh, um, I, uh, I wish a lot of things in the near future. But, but in all seriousness, I, you know, the, the, good, the good news is, the silver lining is, is as, a, as an industry, you know, health systems, practices, patients, companies like ours, uh, capital sources, we, we are chipping away at it, right? Um, I think we know, the, the good news is, is like we're chipping away at it. The data is there to do this better decisioning, do things more intelligently. The access points certainly are there. There is a problem with workforce, uh, uh, which has been persistent, where there's just, you know, not enough humans, uh, qualified humans to take care of all the people that need to be taken care of. But even there, right, through data and technology, we can expand the the, the capacity of, of, of those humans and make them more effective. Uh, so there's a lot to be hopeful for. And, you know, what, what I'm hopeful for, Jared, like I, I think we will get to this vision of exceptional access for everyone everywhere to treat, prevent and cure illness. And it's going to come in, but it's going to come in, um, in kind of fits and starts in certain, certain areas. Right. Right. So, you can already look at an example would be you can already look at um, look at like the orthopedic space. Um, the company I did before this was in the surgery space. We do orthopedic work in in Dexcare as well, where we provide access solutions for orthopedic lines uh, uh, through folks like uh, Freighter, one of our partners in the Milwaukee market. And and you know in that world, right? I mean, you used to have to go into the hospital to get anything done, right? Now you can do in an ambulatory setting. You can do a, you can get a knee, you can get a shoulder, you can even get a hip, you know, these things can be done in, you know, can be done same day. Um, and then what we can, what we do on the front end is we can, again, make all those options more discoverable for you, make it easier to get in, get the minimal amount of information to get you seen as quickly as possible. Do that triage in a more effective way. Leverage a nurse when he or she is available instead of wasting your time as a patient in front of an orth orthopedic surgeon too early, right? Make sure that uh, the capacity is managed so that they can, all those people collectively can see a lot more people and then get them into an ASC to get that, that procedure done same day outpatient half the cost and and better for everyone so there's a lot to be hopeful for that the world is moving that way um we're one of the solutions but it's going to take more than just us and and i think you'll start to see in certain i hate to say you know i hope it's not only sort of disease categories or procedure categories but that's where i, I think you'll see access continue to become better in those spaces and then what we'll have to do over time is filling all the gaps in between for every other type of care uh, that 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 exists out there, and that's, you know, that may that that that'll take a long time. But you know, I, I got into healthcare uh, for very personal reasons. We didn't have a lot of time to talk about it, but got it for 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 personal reasons. And I and the whole team at Dexcare, like we're we're committed to the long game here. This is about everyone everywhere having exceptional access, and it's going to take a long time to do that. Uh, but we can accomplish it if we're all focused on it. And that really leads into my last question, Derek, in terms of what's next. What's next that's really exciting you about the business? Uh, well, what I'm I am most excited about um, I am most excited about delivering on this vision. Uh, 
uh, it's a bit of a broken record, I know, but you know, I, you know, so I, I got into healthcare, uh, because we had some pretty significant, uh, health breakdowns in our family. And once we got, you know, our family member, uh, stabilized, decided to focus everything on healthcare. And so, you know, we all live it. Um, we're still large consumers of healthcare, but I'm sure you too, Jeremy, I mean, we all, we all consume a lot of healthcare. We're humans. We get older, like this, this is going to happen. We all, we all consume it. And so, you know, what's next is continue to climb that mountain to deliver this exceptional access. Now, when you double click on it and get into what that means, it's going to be, it, it's very specifically better decisioning, more intelligent decisioning, um, you know, we don't have to, I always tell the team, we don't have to increase the breadth of what we're doing, the breadth of the solution, the breadth of the vision. There's plenty there. We're a long way from touch and bottom. It's about depth in those areas. And what I've learned in building these data businesses over the years is that you're doing it right. If you never touch bottom at, at worst case, you're flattening the curve, meaning you know, I can do, I can match you with best provider setting modality service line or the intersection of those things today, based on what I know about patient intent and motivation, provider data, health system data, right? Um, tomorrow though, when I pull in this one new piece of data around uh, whatever, you know, longitudinal uh, clinical outcomes by looking at visit history beyond just Dexcare powered visits, but visits everywhere, right? Um, I know that if I can start pulling it together and building a predictive model around not what is your outcome going to be on this visit, but what's it going to be X years down the road? Because, because we provided better access for you, we got ahead of it earlier. We found it earlier. Like that's the stuff that is game changer and gets super exciting. We're actually doing that kind of work or starting that kind of work in the oncology space with our partner, uh, CHN in Indiana and their partner, uh, MD Anderson. And, and, you know, that's the kind of stuff that's game changing. And so what you're going to, what's next for Dexcare is increasing the depth of how we make access better, uh, you know, across disease categories, more specialized categories, deeper understanding of patient provider and health system, better, better um, understanding of those data and leveraging those data to make better decisions. And we're doing it right if we never touch bottom on that. Well, Derek, I really loved having you on the episode here today, sharing your story, talking us through Dexcare and some of uh, the, the health access issues that still exist in the U.S. today and how you're solving them. Hopefully, we can have you come on again in the near future. We can dive more into things, but really appreciate having you on the episode here today. Well, thanks, Jared. I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, appreciate the time and, and thanks for including me. 